Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell. And of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with a third time Jay Campbell podcast guest, my good friend, the one, the only Dr. Roy Buzz Course. Roy, what's up, my bro? How's it going, man? Happy to be here. How's it going, Jay? It's awesome to have you here, man. So me and Monica, I can let the cat out of the bag now. We're going to be talking about this today. So Monica and I actually went up to his clinic very recently. And had a very awesome anti-aging, let's just call it anti-aging treatment done to both of us, which is turning out to be uh, a blessing in more ways than one. And we'll get into that into this show. But uh, for a lot of you guys that don't know him, and I think most of my audience does know you now, he does run and own the Buckeye Anti-Aging Clinic in CBUS, Columbus, Ohio. And um, yeah, the Go Buckeyes, by the way, that was insane. How about, how about, how about the Notre Dame coach? Two Oh, up players, come on, yeah. <laughs> don't, even, don't even get me going. I have so many old Notre Dame, Golden Dover, Homer friends in my in my family, and they're all like, they gotta fire him. <laughs> nah, he's done a good job. It's that's a mess up though. But, well, yeah. <laughs> it was an amazing game. I mean, it was an absolutely amazing game. I mean, I mean, I watched literally the entire second half, and I literally called my brother and I said when they got the ball back with like a minute. 20 to go and i go you just know that marvin harrison jr is going to catch a touchdown it's time i know he's my money he hurt the game you know so yeah it was pretty- it happened, but they won it was an amazing game i mean those kind of games bro are what usually propel teams to win national championships so because they always got to have that one test yeah and that's why college football is so good man those guys are playing Dude, it was an amazing game. Definitely, definitely amazing game. All right. So obviously we're going to be talking about all things anti-aging today. Um, you and I are very, very har- hardcore conspiracy analysts, as I've been asking or saying now, and obviously today's September 28th, you and I actually did a podcast earlier this year, so that's cool. But uh, today's September 28th, 2023, bro, the world is, as you know, destabilizing. Are you long humanity or short? <laughs> well, and here's a crazy story, Jay. And we haven't talked for the past week, but you know, a crazy story is my mom's boyfriend is, uh, he's 79 years old. Um, he had, uh, he, he was in the, he's at the hospital. He had, uh, some, some stomach issues. So they went in, they did an exploratory on him, and they found a spot on small intestine and took the spot out. Um, but he's been there for like, like the, the problem is once you're in the system and once yeah. you're in the hospital, he's been there for two weeks now. Right. Jeez. So, but here's like, here's a crazy story, Jay. So he's in there a weekend, hasn't had any food for a week. And listen, like you don't get out of it. He's laying in bed, no food, no movement. Right. So you know, you're not going to get better. You get no sleep. When you're in the hospital, you know, like they're, you're up every 15 minutes, they're poking the product at you, lights on, you know, all the, all the, all the blue light, all the crazy stuff. Right. So he goes with a kidney failure. Oh, he's in kidney failure. This is last. I got to be careful what I say out here, but I, you know, I didn't, <laughs> this is not just anything to do with watch me. This is God's, God's honest truth. He goes with a freaking kidney failure. I and mean, this was like four days ago. Right. So they're going to do, they're going to put an ostomy bag on his kidney because his, his left kidney had failed. So, you know, I don't know what to do when they, you know, it's an emergency surgery, do whatever. And they, they come in to take him out to surgery and like, oh, we can't do surgery tonight because he had just had an injection for anti-clotting, whatever, like, you know, some anti-clotting medication, we'll have to do it first thing tomorrow morning. So they walk out of there. I'm thinking, man, what the hell can we do with this guy? So, you know, you know I'm thinking, you know, what can we do, you know, or, you know, outside of the box, outside of medical. So we went and we got him some, uh, gave him some NAD and glutathione and I out to phoresis patch. Because those are both known for renal failure. Put that patch on them, 750 milligrams of, of NAD, 250 milligrams of glutathione. The next morning, they come in to take him to surgery. My mom's like, just test him one more time, see how he's doing. Like, there's, well, there's no way it's going to be, you know, we have to do it. They tested him, kidney functions back. So think of that, man. Like, this guy here. So, like, what you in the system? They don't even look outside of the box. Bro, no, no, no. So I did a podcast earlier today. This is relevant um, with a guy by the name of Roger Drummer. He's actually a pretty famous guy and he's older now and he's been out of the like conversation podcast, radio interviews, but he, he was famous because he healed himself from stage between stage three and stage four um, pancreatic cancer, right? Which is, you know, usually a death sentence. And he did it through, you know, conscious meditation and introspection and just going within and, you know, healing himself, you know, using the power of God. And he, he's a very profound speaker. He's older now, but it, it was amazing. But dude, he told me a story of like, 
what it was like for him to get his diagnosis. And so when he got this, when it happened to him, this is, I, I mean, it, it's worth telling because it's similar. He basically went to the, well, so he started to bleed. He started to pee. He started to pee blood, right? And it was in the, literally he got up in the middle of the night, you know, to go to the bathroom. He was like 62 years old and p- blood started coming out. He was clotting through his piss. So rather than go to an emergency center or, a, you know, a 24 hour urgent care, his buddy ran a hospital, uh, m- emergency medicine hospital. And so he like waited till the morning and he texted him and he said, Hey, this is happening. Can I come and see you and you take care of me? And he was like, absolutely come in. And so when he came in, um, they got him se- seated with somebody in emergency care, emergency medicine in this facility right away. And uh, it was literally on Friday, uh, the day before the weekend before Memorial Day weekend. This is a true story. Guy says to him, and this is not his friend, but the guy that you know he put him with said, look, man, you're going to have to go see a urologist immediately or a urologist and an oncologist right away. But we can't give you, this is like 15 years ago. We can't give you your diagnosis because you know it's again it's all the bullshit that they have with um what what is it uh what, what blocks them from giving him this diagnosis i forget whatever that bullshit is but bottom line is you got to go see right away and so the guy's like he freaked out because he's bleeding blood and he's like and he doesn't go to doctors anyway and he's like uh when am i gonna go see him and they're like oh well you won't be able to see him until next tuesday or wednesday so he says look on your brain the whole time man this is what no, 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 this is insane. This is what the guy says to him. This is the guy who ran the deal. He says, but, but, but dude, I'm peeing blood. Like, like you're going to make me wait till Tuesday. That's five days from now. And he's like, he, the guy literally point blank, point blank, plain as day, literally looks at him and says, oh, don't worry. You're not going to bleed out by then. <laughs> what, what? Oh, shit. No worries. Yeah. Dude, he said he's literally, he hands him the paper. And it's like, you know, this is your referral slip when you go to this doctor that we're recommending to you on Tuesday. He said, bro, I literally almost blacked out. He's like, I didn't know whether to hit the guy in the face, to, you know, beat him to death or just like laugh. And he's like something at that point, which, you know, he calls it God source, whatever came into him. And was like, you're going to be OK. He heard a voice in his head. But, you know, we were talking about it and it goes back to your your dad, your father-in-law. The reality is, is that these people that work in this system, as you know, they don't see your father-in-law or this guy, Roger, as anything but just pieces of meat that they're triaging relative to how long, who's the most at risk of dying. Right. Think about that. It's insane how broken the medical system is. But you constantly hear stories like this. You know, everybody has a story like this. So it's like, you almost have to have this happen to you or someone close to you in your family before you realize you got to stop going. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's why like people have to realize you can't healthcare in the U S if you get shot, heart attack or something, it's great. Right. I mean, you lived in Mexico, you know, like like, this is, uh, this is not said as disparagement to medical doctors here in the U S it's not, but if you're dependent upon your health insurance or the hospital, Or your or your family practice to determine your long term health, you, you're going to be in that situation. You're done. You have to think outside the box. You have to have you know, you know. We were talking about like like your uh, your st- your stepdaughter, like even the trainers of these colleges, they're decades behind where we are right now. Like so, you I have can't to even use peptides, Roy. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> there's so much good stuff out there, and the FDA and big pharma suppresses all this stuff, man. So. You know, you have, you know, there's so many conditions people suffer with. They just don't have to, right? So, so. Dean, it's funny you just said this because I want to bring this up because this is another relevant story. So, obviously, you know, I'm in Tampa now, as you just said, living in Mexico for almost a year, 10 months. And I had a basal cell carcinoma that they never removed because they gave me medicine. And she said, yeah, you know what? You probably have to come in and get it removed. The medicine doesn't work. And so, obviously, as you know, the last four or five months have been a blur. We moved back to Florida. I forgot about it. It's gotten a little bit bigger now. The system is so broken in Florida. Bro, I can't even get in to see a single dermatologist in under nine months. What if we had like a third degree? No, we've got a melanoma. That's what I mean. A melanoma, blastoma, all these things. It's literally insane what is happening. But again, until people experience this firsthand, it's just another story from some guy like me or you. People don't even understand how fucked up it is. Dude, Monica literally is looking an appointment with my dermatologist in Mexico 
to go down there in three days uh, in in uh, November to get this handled so she can just burn this off and get rid of it because I can't go see a fucking doctor in Tampa. There's nobody. We've called every dermatologist and no one will see this before April. Crazy. Yeah, so I think, you know, everyone, you just have to plan on, you know, investing, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars a month into your own health. And if you do that, you'll be good, right? Like, and in, in, in you're going to be healthy. But Dude, if- I would say, I would say a thousand. I would say a thousand. People say, I don't have that kind of money. That's not true. People waste a thousand dollars every month on beer, going out to restaurants, lattes. If you count up all the waste, you have a thousand dollars extra a month that you can spend on your personal health care. And you know what I mean by that supplements, eating clean. I mean, bro, you have to, you don't even have an option at this point. And you do not want to end up in the, in the, you know, we'll call it the system or the, you know, or, or the hospital, because I feel like you go there to die, man. It, you, that's it. Nothing healing in that hospital. You can't, it, it, you know, that's, that's like your last resort, whatever you, Dude, can if, you don't, if you don't spend it and again, you know this, but if you don't spend that money monthly on proactive, you know, personalized healthcare, when you do have the incident, it's going to bankrupt you. It's going to be a hundred times more expensive than just spending 500 to a thousand dollars a month on your personal health care. People don't understand that until it happens. I mean, how many people literally go bankrupt from having a major health event in their life? Their insurance cancels them. We work your whole life to save up money. And if you had a lot, uh, you know, if you end up in the hospital for two or three weeks at the end of your life, there, there's gone. a dollars gone. Right. So, so you, you go, you give it all away. You work your whole life for what? So, bro, well, it's insane. So, right. yeah, but the good news is with with people like you, you know, this information before the internet. How would you even find this stuff? Nothing. You wouldn't know. No. You know what I'm saying? So, the the beauty of now is it, it's it's the you know everyone can find out good information out there, and you can you know research it back and up. You know, you have several book, books written on this stuff. You know, it's all it's all research. You're not just pulling stuff out of the air. You have the data to back it up, the research to back it up. This is real. Anti aging is real. A lot of these therapies. I mean, it can change. You know, the how you live the last 20, 30 years of your life. Do you want to be decrepit and, and, and non-vibrant or do you want to live, you know, you can be in your 50s, 60s, 70s and be healthier than most 20 and 30 right, year olds. Right, You can be like us, in amazing yeah. shape, using the peptides, the growth hormone, therapeutic testosterone, all the things that we take. Or you could be literally crep- decrepit. And, and, you know, it's funny you say that because I'm just, you and I personally have these conversations all the time. We talk about our own families, right? right. Like they look at us like we're fucking aliens. But meanwhile, they have 30 pill bottles in their cabinets from the shit that the, the, their doctors give them to take to medicate themselves from the side effects of the other bullshit that they're taking. Yeah. It makes no sense. You know, like you think a simple condition like osteoarthritis, Jay, no one has to have osteoarthritis. No. You can get rid of osteoarthritis, you know, use eight, you know, we, we talk about a 2 m today if you want to or something, but like arthritis is caused by proteases, catch it early, get rid of the proteases and the arthritis is gone. Yeah, I know. But with the traditional yeah. medical body, you have arthritis, you take anti inflammatories, which it on the cox pathway, it 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 yep. feeds it up even faster. And then when it's really bad, you'll get a cortisone shot that makes it even worse. And then you know, your sin vist might be covered by your insurance, which never works. It doesn't do anything. That might buy you a you know a month or two months, and then we'll just replace the joint. Then you're back in that hospital system. You're back by the way, by the way, how many this is an interesting question for you, and you would know better than anybody, like how many NFL teams are still injecting their players with cortisone when they get a serious injury at halftime. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> well, you know, unfortunately, you probably know this, Jay, that, you know, all these professional athletes, when they get hurt, you know, if you can't, you don't tell the team. Right. You call you call your agent and your agent gets them to someone like maybe you or something and, and get them on the right track to healing because you, if you tell the team, number one, the next day in practice will be two other guys at that position. And, you know, they don't, you know, you're going to get cortisone or some BS, you know what I'm saying? So there, there's so many better options out there. That's what people, that's why it's funny because we got to say this, like people always say to me, they're like, why do people like Tom Brady play till they're 46 years old? And then you get a 22 year old rookie deep defensive back who takes an over the counter asthma medication and gets suspended for a year. <laughs> so harsh. Don't even get me going. But yeah, you know, so let's talk about obviously the point of why you and I are here is not to lament about the state of society, but to talk about regenerative medicine and how we really are on the edge of a biochemical 
slash biomedical golden age. I mean, there's so much out there, as you know, from frequency healing, from peptides, from bioregulators, from all these things that you guys are doing with stem cells. And I mean, it's, it, it, it's unreal how much is truly out there. But dude, again, like you said, you know, the FDA, Big Pharma, the various alphabet soup agencies, they suppress the information. I mean, if you don't have like somebody like me or you or, you know, people like us as a friend in your inner circle, how would you ever know? You wouldn't know. And, here, and here's another one that you don't think about, Jay. The Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, Alphabet Soup there, you're not allowed to, you know, if you came to me and, and I did a procedure on you and it, it helped fix whatever condition on you, fix your knee pain, I can't even have a testimony of you on mine saying, hey, I listen about the Beverly Good Lift or not, because that's considered a false claim, even though it's out of your mouth. Because they're going to say, were your double blind clinical trials to prove it? You know, you have to do clinical trials, which cost billions of dollars, which is never going to happen. Like, so, so you, you're muzzled. So people have to seek us out. Is that how they find out? Right. You know, or word of mouth or because it's, it's all this undercover because the government, the federal trade commission, big pharma, they hate this stuff, man. It's unreal. I mean, and that's why, as you know, we need to say this because it's important. I mean, that's why all these outside the United States places, you know, stem cell clinics, regenerative lab clinics. I mean, these guys all go offshore because they can obviously stay, say things that they can't say in the United States. Right. But the, but the risk of offshore, Jay, is then I, you do worry about the quality and, sure. you know, so at the end of the day, you know, are you, is it safe to go there? And, w- and what is the product? You know, so, you know, pretty much anything you can do offshore, you can do here in the States, but you're going to have to find those providers out to do them. Who are willing to do it. Okay, so let's talk about that because I want to ask a very important question that people seem to ignore. Obviously, we all know that many people got the the jabba dabba yeah. and over the last three years and more of that, you know, boosters and all these other things, like how tainted is the population from a pool, from a you know, from a from a stem cell pool standpoint of non-vaccinated versus vaccinated? Um, I think a lot of it depends on the state where the tissue comes from. Uh, our tissue, uh, we're lucky. We have contracts with hospitals in Texas, which has, I, I suspect, I don't know, this is a fact, has a lower vaccination rate. So, uh, of the, you know, so about 15% of the C-sections that we harvest are from unvaccinated moms, which, you know, I think that's probably high compared to, you know, like a New York or something that I suspect would be much higher. Is there any, is there, but is there anything really governing that as far as like regulating, like who is not as far as like when they pull, when they get the actual stem cell pools of people or just basically a kind of a Russian roulette? You don't really know. Manufacturer, so there's no regulations. Uh, there, there's no regulations. Like obviously if someone has AIDS or, or herpes, there's certain things that, that obviously the tissue is not allowed to be donated, you know, just like blood and all the other stuff. But, you know, as far as the vaccine goes, there is no regs on that. So uh, the tissue bank that we use, you know, we pick only unvaccinated mothers, which, like I said, is about 15 percent. Um, but that's why I worry. Like if you go offshore, to, you know, like these kind of countries like Colombia and Mexico, that whole population is vaccinated. Yeah, you don't know. There's no yeah, way. So and there's no way you can screen for that. No, unfortunately. And and. and, and I heard someone say online that that the that the spike protein doesn't get into the the umbilical cord. You know that's a lie. That's a lie. It it gets there. You can't you can't filter it out. So if anyone's telling you that, you mean run away because that, that's I, not the case. I mean Nick Andrews, who's a good friend of both of us. You know him and I were having this conversation at the end of 2020. That that that's all nonsense. That it can it will contaminate and filtrate into pretty much any tissue, any biological system, any organ. I mean all everything can be contaminated. <laughs> 100 percent unfortunately right so yeah so so that's why i worry about people going offshore you really know what you're getting so no, at least in the u.s there's some at least the tissue banks here are regulated there's definitely be proper screening and you know and if you use a reputable tissue bank they can screen out for the vaccine too so let's talk about um that let's talk about umbilical cord extracts and like where that's going and where it's at like how much more advanced do you see that going from where it's at now, or is it pretty much at the tip of the spear now? You know, I, I think it's at the tip of the spear because it's not manipulated, right? There's really yeah. not a lot you can do with it. So there really, it's a question of quantity and, and, and the quality of it. Right. So, you know, cause you really don't want to manipulate a product. So I, I think, you know, as far as umbilical cord extracts go, you know, umbilical cord blood extracts, the amniotic fluid extracts, you know, you, the more, 
close to nature, the more, the more, you know, unmanipulated it is, the better the product's going to be. Now for, so just for basic, cause we've talked about this before, but for, for people that are not as familiar with stem cell treatments and stuff like that, like what are we using umbilical cord tissue for specifically? Um, well, basically what you, what you're doing, the easiest way to think of this is when you're using, uh, you know, the, the two things you would use, we'll, we'll, we'll call it proliferants, or, or, or basically think of them as fertilizers. And everyone's heard of platelet-rich plasma, right? Which is you take a person's blood and you capture the growth and put it into an area. And then, uh, and then Wharton's jelly extract would be very similar. And it, and it's really, just to be clear, it's all about the protein. It's not, you know, with, with, with a Wharton's jelly that has, you know, there's stem cells in that, obviously. You're not injecting a million stem cells into someone and it's growing into a billion stem cells. As soon as you inject these into a body, you know, the, the body's immune system attacks them and breaks them down almost immediately. You're not getting DNA transfer, okay? Just to be clear. But what happens is all those proteins and exosomes and all those, the, all those things are released and start a healing, basically help the body heal itself. That's the mechanism that works, just like with PRP. So just think of it as really good fertilizer. And where the, the extracts from birth tissue really stand out, as people get older, their own you know platelets are weaker. So especially as you get older, that's where those tissues really can be a benefit to people for different types of conditions. So the, what are the conditions primarily? Because there's obviously a lot of confusion about this. You know, I get messages, you get messages, you know, people want to ask like, can I get a PRP treatment, a stem cell treatment into my spine? You know, I've got disc degeneration. I've got, you know, this, that, and the other where I'm like bone on bone. And I always say, well, because as you know, there's a lot of people lying too in the marketplace that they can treat pretty much everything. So can you kind of just differentiate what, what, they, what they can treat and what they absolutely will not treat? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to start. The, the, the main thing a lot of people will want, want to treat for is osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease, right? Uh, but what you have to realize, if you have osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease, the cause of that arthritis is either due to overuse, trauma, or post-surgery. What your body does is your body releases these proteins called proteases into a joint. We'll say like a knee joint, for example. We'll say you're 35 years old, you tear a meniscus, you go have meniscus surgery, the meniscus surgery is great. But then 10 years later, you have osteoarthritis in your knee. What the hell happened? Well, it's not the surgery's fault, but the surgery creates trauma in the joint. So the body releases these proteins or proteases to clean up the tissue in the joint. The reason that becomes an issue is your joints become avascular between the age of uh, uh, 30 and 35. And those proteases, which are large proteins, can't get out of the joint. So then they start, once they've cleaned up the damage, they start to eat away at the joint. Okay, so they're like they're basically just eating away, and that's what causes osteoarthritis. So you could put PRP in there, or you could put a Wart's jelly extract in there, and that'd be like uh, putting fertilizer. You know, you know, we because we everything in the body is always rejuvenating, regenerating yeah, everything. Okay, yep. so when someone has a degenerative joint disease from osteoarthritis, that joint's breaking down quicker than it's growing back. Yep. And, and with arthritis, it's because the proteases are eating the joint quicker than their body can grow it. So you could put a Wart's jelly extract or a PRP in there. And the joint can outgrow the proteases for a period of time. But if you don't get rid of the proteases, eventually the arthritis comes back. So for anyone with osteoarthritis, a better treatment would be using alpha-2 macroglobulin, which is another product that you can make out of a person's blood. And just to be clear on what that is, A2M is another protein that's produced by your liver. And it's actually the largest circulating protein in your bloodstream. Yep. But the problem is it's so large, it can't get into your joints. But what a physician could do is they can take your blood and capture that protein and then inject it into a joint, Jay. And what it does is it binds with the proteases, literally stopping arthritis at the molecular level. So that's a better treatment for osteoarthritis than even a Wharton's jelly extract or a PRP. Why are more people not getting this treatment? Because you and I both know, I mean, what... I mean, like even for me, for example, like I take J Flex Nine from True Nutrition, which is a very powerful, you know, mixture of joint protecting, soft tissue enhancing compounds like Botswana and glucosamine and chondroitin and you know uh, what is it, what is it uh, collagen peptide and oh you know all the most advanced stuff. In fact, Roy, when I don't take it, I'm not kidding you. I take six capsules a day, AM PM. If I take it, if I stop taking it for literally a week. I get forearm issues. I get joint issues in my elbow. I mean, let's just be honest. Older people, especially the harder we train, we need to support the soft tissue. And obviously, I, you know, I get stem cell treatments, but why are more people not doing this? Um, not covered by insurance, doesn't fit the medical model. 
uh, big pharma is not involved. I mean, th that's considered autologous. Basically, you're making it out of the person's own blood. Yes. And anything that's autologous, you can't patent. There's no money for, for everyone to get involved, right? <laughs> so if if you could patent it, I guarantee you. And there's actually a company now trying to pat patent a synthetic A2M. So maybe in 10 years, we'll see that. There'll be, you know, probably $10,000 injection. But, but you can make it out of your own blood. You don't need to make it synthetic. So, so do you think then the biggest issue, I mean, obviously we're being very transparent and authentic here. Obviously, you know, we love each other. We're good friends and stuff, but like, is it just a cost issue because the system will not subrogate insurance for this? So people see the cost outside, you know, plus there's obviously the negative bullshit about offshore and all that, but is it just a truly simply just a cost issue for most people, even though we both know that spending two to two grand to three grand a year you know, on a stem cell treatment that to treat your soft tissue is going to be far more stable, create far better gains for you from a long-term ROI, st ROI standpoint than waiting. Well, no, Jay, it's, it's, it's as simple as going back to supplements. Okay. Right. So let's take something as very simple as vitamin D. Okay. So if you had COVID, for example, and I said, Hey Jay, take vitamin D because it's going to help treat your COVID. I can't say that. I can't advertise that because the Federal Trade Commission would come in and say, listen, that's a false claim because there's no double blind clinical trials to prove it. <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, it's controlled. So the same thing, like like play the rich plasma, it can't hurt you. But but I can't say, hey, well, you can use PRP to treat your erectile dysfunction or Ward's jelly because because there's no double blind clinical trial. Because the double blind clinical trial, Jay, costs in the billions with a B, not millions, billions. Billions. Like 10 to 15 years to go through. So it's not like some I mean, I think people Get like the whole COVID vaccine got pushed through real quick. A normal product to go from you know concept to being available to public is ten to fifteen years and billions of dollars of clinical trials. Why the hell would you do that on something you couldn't patent? Do you see what I'm saying? So so be, if you don't have those double line clinical trials, you can't make any claims about it. So I can't say I, I can say it may be beneficial, may help you, but I can't say hey Jay, even though we know. A2M stops arthritis. I can't say that. And I can't say we use the treat. I can say, hey, it may help you. Um, but that's it. I can't say A2M for the treatment of arthritis. Because if I do, the FTC will slap me down. It's 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 insane, dude. I mean, I mean, obviously we can't go even deeper because I don't I want this video to stay up. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's the same way on social media. There's certain things you just can't say. You know, there's sacred cows. This is a sacred cow. It's like you said, I mean, look. I'm very outspoken in all my books and obviously in my podcast. You know, I've had Dr. Anthony J come on this show multiple times like you. Obviously, his profound landmark book, Astro Generation, he has an entire chapter on the truth about peer review and published research. It literally is pay for play. Just what like you just said, the FDA, to get a randomized controlled study you know, multiple, obviously, and then to get, you know, all the data that you need to do to pass phase one, phase, phase two, and phase three clinical trials literally costs usually a billion dollars. Nobody in the only big world are going to do it. I can't do it. Big oh, almost, almost nobody can. I, I mean, it's, it's outrageous. And even if you could, you would be steered to go in the direction that big pharma wants you to because you have those kind of money and resources. So, I mean, dude, the whole planet, is pretty much engaged in a pay for play situation. And and again, as Dr. J said, and I, I I point this out every time I do a podcast and I and this comes up, you can get any person anywhere in the peer review research world to agree with your study. All you have to do is pay them for it. You literally have to tell them what the anticipated outcome is previous to the study. And then at the end they still they they support you as long as the sh the, sh the check shows up or the wire transfer is made. <laughs> you know. And, what, and what's scary too, Jay, you have these naturally occurring substances like uh, and berberine, like it's good for blood sugar, right? right. Yeah, but, but there's no money, so then they'll make it into metformin, they'll make the long-acting metformin. Like, it, and metformin's safe, I'm, I'm not, but, but you, ha you can't have the natural substance, so you have to change one or two molecules so you can patent it. But sometimes when you change those one or two molecules, it goes from being completely safe to sick. Yeah. To sick. Yeah. It's so, but you have to, but they have to do that to patent it to make the money. So the system has failed, Jay. It, it, it's, it's totally failed. I'll actually go deeper because you said metformin. So now there's no money in metformin because it's off patent. So right. now the research chemical companies are making it and they don't care. They're not going after them. They're not shutting them down because it's exactly as you said. 
What would the benefit of them going after them to shut them down when they don't make money? Roy, this is all about money. It's always been about money. It's not about health. It's not even about like preventing people because again, in a common sense, you know, world, they would be like, oh, well, you know, the research guys are making metformin, which is a patented licensed pharmaceutical. And we can't have that, right? Because at the end of the day, it's like, oh, well, you know, we give this to type 2 diabetics. And then the, the, the scientific research shows that diabetics on metformin live longer than non diabetic right? So it's like it, they don't even care. There, There's no enforcement now because there's no money to be made in metformin. Which is that's why I worry about the the GLP one agonist though, man. Those ones there, I'm surprised they haven't taken down. Well, so well, here's the thing: we were supposed to do a podcast about this last night, and it got canceled because it was an emer- emergency in a family. I've actually interviewed a very very high level uh, former former healthcare Wall Street executive who basically is former now because he said no to the you know, and they were and he was a big wig, and you know he was like, my shit doesn't stink. There's not good. You can't do anything to me. I I run this company, and they were like, oh, you want to bet? But he's a very open, outspoken guy. He's actually, you know, running Nick's stuff now. And he pretty much, you know, in the interview said, look, the reason, and this is the reason this is, I don't know if you've even thought of this. This is like higher dimensional thinking, but they haven't let it go because guess what, Roy? All these people that are getting side effects from it, because we know why, because the docs that prescribe it have no fucking idea on how to tell them how to do it right, eat protein, resistance train, do all the things that you and I do on a daily basis. They know that they'll be able to make more drugs off of their fuckups. <laughs> no, they're literally making drugs to to increase skeletal muscle mass from the muscle wasting of the GLP one. Think about this. It's a giant cottage industry where these guys, it's bro, big farm is no different than fucking Silicon Valley. You know, you think of these Silicon Valley incubator companies, because you and I know this from our business, where they they think they can just warehouse let's just call it whorehouse. They think they can warehouse TRT. They can just do these cookie cutter templates and sell testosterone boosters and, you know, HCG or whatever the monologues or whatever it is and never get them into the whole TRT because they know the government stuff with that too. And they all fail. And now they're doing the same shit with Big Pharma where they're literally having startup incubator companies create, you know, pills that people will take that will supposedly stop muscle loss on a GLP-1 which doesn't even happen to anybody that knows how to use a GLP-1 you know, within the context of health and longevity. It's a scam. Right. The whole thing is a scam, but that's why that's your answer. Because you're right. They would have removed them, but they're like, well, wait a minute. We're making so much money off of Terzapatide, which is Manjaro. Why don't we build five other or 10 other drugs that will be a similar class, but they will be designed to, again, to medicate the symptomology and side effects of GLP-1. I'm taking it properly. That's crazy. It's insane. They don't even care about the people that are doing it right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's but bro, think about this. Think about metformin and think about dihydroberberin. What have they done to the people pr- you know promoting those for the last 10 years? They've gone after us. They said that those are bad for you, that they cause mTOR signaling and mitochondrial dysfunction and all this other nonsense that they use, you know, bogus studies and like fat diabetic women. They yeah, get, totally that makes sense. From the mitochondrial dysfunction that Dave Asprey and Peter Atia and all these big names, you know, claim that metformin causes. If you look at the study, which I have, and I've written about this, Dr. Chandler Mars is like an obesity doctor in, in uh, I think she's in Arizona. She was in Florida when she did the research. They were looking at 80 women who were taking 10 grams of metformin a day. They were all obese, diabetic uh, women. Think about this. Crazy. And so, yeah, there was mitochondrial dysfunction along with other, other bullshit. Right. But again, they always cherry pick the data points they want to use and just to bad mouth something that, you know, as you know, bro, people could use metformin for like a dollar a month. Yeah, it's very expensive. You get the drugstore, you get it for you know what, whatever. Give it away for free in Florida, at public. So, yeah, it goes kind of goes down to you know if you're listening to this podcast, you know, do your own research. You know, read some of Jay's books. You know, you know Nick Andrews is a great. You know, there's lots of good resources out there, and there's lots of doctors that are outside of the system. You know, there's the the system, and the system is do what your insurance covers. Wait till I'm sick and go to the, my doctor and then the hospital and. Let them do all this testing and try to find something wrong, or you're proactive and you stay on top of it. Then you're, you're 
great, right? But that's outside the system. And, and, the, and, the, and the other problem, Jay, and you see it, if you're in the system, they don't even want to hear about people outside. I, I, I just had, uh, you know, you know, uh, Kathleen Smith, I just had lunch with her. She came into town and she, she practices in Boston, which is very to the other side. And, and during COVID, because even now she's like, she would prescribe ivermectin. The pharmacist would call and say, we're not going to, we're not going to allow that prescription. What are you doing? Surprised she didn't get suspended. Yeah. So, well, but, but the, the pharmacist wouldn't fill the doctor's prescription for ivermectin, which we know is okay now. So like, it, it's just, it's just crazy. But anyways, but there's lots of good docs out there. Lots of people like you, you know, and, and right now is the golden age, Jay. Like the technology right. is out there. There's no reason you have to have arthritis for sure. You know, like lots of common things like erectile dysfunction, sexual performance, you know, all these things are totally curable, you know, hormone replacement therapy, the peptides are amazing. You know, like, like there's no reason you have to age out. There's, you can be 50, 60, 70 in your lifetime best shape. There's no, no excuse for that at this point. Well, well let's, before we end this, and then I want you, I want you, cause I've never done this with any of my docs, but I wanted me and you to do this together, but let's talk about ozone injections just for a minute, but. Okay. I also want to do like let's just recommend the Jay Campbell Buzz Horf. I'm 40. I'm a man. I'm a woman. This is what I do. I'm 50. I'm a man. I'm a woman. I'm 60 and older. I'm a man. I'm a woman. What I would do, but let's just let, just real quick, just talk about ozone injections. Yeah, ozone injections are amazing. It's another thing that they use them a lot in Russia and in Europe. Not a lot here in the U.S. Um, and basically the reason ozone, ozone is O3, where oxygen is O2. So it's right. three oxygen molecules. It's a very unstable molecule. Uh, but the beauty of ozone is when you inject ozone, what you have to think about it, if, if you listen to this podcast, the areas you have that don't heal are usually areas that have really poor oxygen supply. We're talking about right. tendons, joints, different areas right. like that. Your body's own stem cells have to have oxygen to release their growth factors to heal. Yep. So that's why those areas that don't have oxygen don't heal. That's why, if you think about it, Jay, when you put a band, when you, you, if you have a cut, you put a band aid on the cut, right? And the band aid has holes in it to keep liquid in. Why does it have holes in it to keep liquid in? Because you got to have oxygen. Exactly. And so you, you, can, so you, you can't inject oxygen because if you did that, you could get an embolism. But ozone's even better because it's 50% stronger because it's O3 instead of O2. And it's totally safe. You can't get an embolism. You can inject it right into an artery, nothing happens. And when you put that in there, it oxidizes the area. It's like hyperbaric chamber on steroids on the area that, that is injured to help it heal. <laughs> well, so, that mean? so, so it's amazing. And we use it on all of our patients that have any injuries because it, it basically is like putting a hyperbaric chamber on that area, on that specific joint or wherever the injury is at to help it heal, get oxygen there. It, and it's all about getting oxygen, getting circulation. A lot of people decide kind of rabbit hole just a sidebar but um a lot of people are using hbot you know hyperbaric oxygen therapy right now um there's a lot of value in it when when does it not have value i, I mean my opinion this is my opinion i really think if you're going to do do that you have to go in one of the metal chambers i don't know that the oh uh, all those bullshit little nickel dime fucking fold up tent things they sell now that's yeah, but a, a, a real iron hyperbaric chamber, I think, could benefit anybody, Jay. Yeah, or, yeah. I, I, I think I, I think there's lots of good research on that, and and the, and the, it just makes sense, right? Well, so for healing, I, I know you know, and I want your professional opinion, but obviously Monica used it in Mexico when she had her boobs, you know, redone. Um, you know, I did it for my surgery for the first two weeks to speed up healing. But I mean, like, I mean, so the so the main things for HB for HBOT or to speed up healing. Yep. Um, but like, are there certain things that can do that people aren't using it for that they just don't know enough about? Because I mean, they are pretty much in every major city now. Yeah, I mean, obviously the one that stands out is any type of wound healing for sure, right? Sure, so sure, sure, any sure. anywhere, any type of healing process, there's going to be a huge benefit. Um, is it going to help with other things? I, I don't think it's going to hurt you for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but but I, I don't, you know, there, there's probably other things for the money I would do in, in front of that. But but I think for injuries, if you're recovering from a surgery or wounds, I think it's very important. But that's where the ozone comes in too. You, you yeah. know, if it's a joint injection, if a joint injury, the ozone is going to even be more effective if you can focus it on one area. Right? So you're gonna, so you're gonna j just to, to be clear for people because we're gonna clarify this in a second. But you're gonna use ozone. And then after they get injected with ozone, depending on the joint or the area, we're going to also follow up for at least what every week or twice a week with HBOT. Um, 
we, we basically, what we typically do is if someone has osteoarthritis, we always use the A2M molecule or the yep. A2M protein because you got to get rid of the cause of the arthritis. Yep. So when someone comes in, we always do ozone first. Another kind of weird mechanism with ozone, I don't want to get too scientific on here, but you have these nerve receptors called TRPV1 nerve receptors that when someone has chronic pain, we'll say at an elbow or back for a long period of time, those nerves are just firing, 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 nah, you know, yeah. months or years. Sometimes, even when you heal it, they're firing, they just keep firing. When you inject ozone, it does a good job of resetting those. Nice. So we do that to reset those nerve receptors and to get oxygen to the area. So and it, after that, well, when you inject, just because again, people are going to ask, because they hear injection, as you know, bro, 80% of people are scared shitless of getting injected. So when you inject, like, where are you injecting? And you're using a tiny needle so that they don't have to be a fear, fear based, right? It's an acupuncture needle. So it's a 27 loop needle, right? So it's right. very small because you're, you're injecting gas. You know, right, right. So it's a very small gauge needle, but you inject it to the area. Now, the beauty of ozone, Jay, is it disperses. So you don't even have to be accurate with it. You could have a blind doctor, as long as you can feel where kind of where your pain's at. If you inject it there, it's going to disperse to the area. So <laughs> I can just see people right now, well, bro, you, you guys are joking about it. My doctor is blind. He's 86. My family's been like, seeing him for 45 minutes. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get to the nitty gritty. I mean, this has been an amazing podcast already, but like, you're 40 years old. You're a man. You're a woman. Doesn't matter. You can do both. You can break it down separate too. What are we doing to live longer and stronger? Obviously, the people that follow me, this audience, are very sophisticated. You know, they know about my God stack. They know about the things that we're doing. But what are some of the things that they should just like? You know, so let's just say right now, check hormone optimization for sure. Whatever. Right. We know, we know that both men and women, you got to get your blood work done. You got to understand if you got a deficiency. Most people, as you know, are walking around with a deficiency because the environment is so contaminated. And then from there, we're thinking probably most likely some form of a uh, growth hormone inducing agonist peptide or even growth hormone itself, if you can afford it and get it. But beyond those two things, like what else are we talking about? I mean, I, 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 most of our patients will have them do basically, you know, I look at the three body systems, the neuroendocrine system, uh, GI system and, yep. and, and your detox system. So, you know, with our patients, we're doing for neuroendocrine, we're doing blood work and also saliva adrenal test. You know, because if someone is hyper has a, has a hyper cortisol state all the time, you know, they might not know like a stage one adrenal failure and your cortisol levels through the roof all the time, you're going to be catabolic all the time. You wouldn't uh-huh. know it that adrenal test. And those uh, people in where can't sleep, they're the ones that can't sleep, right? Because their cortisol is just constant. Yeah, or they're injured all the time and they have aches and pains all the time, right? And they don't know why they're breaking down, right? Yeah. And, and, and all of these things, the beauty, Jay, is you can fix them either with slight diet modification or supplementation. There's no, you, you don't have to use pharmaco- you know, any drugs for any of these things here. You're just getting the body to heal itself. Yeah. You know, I think the gut is essential for everyone. I have to send you your gut test, by the way, Jay. I, I'm, I'm so you, no, I know, no. You're dying over there. You're dying now. <laughs> 90% of the cells of your body are in your gut. When I say your gut, I'm not talking about your belly. I'm talking about your esophagus to your anus, okay? Yes. But your second brain, 90% of your cells are there. Your microbiome. Yeah. So your microbiome is essential to get that thing tested because, you you know, people have infections. They don't even know they have them. They have sap. They have strep. They have Giardia. They have H. pylori. And you can live your whole life with this and not know. And that and that's a form of stress to your body that you want to eliminate if you have it. And it's a it, it, they have DNA technology now, Jay. It's real simple. You send it to a lab, and the test it tests for the DNA in the bugs. And if you have a bug, get rid of it because it's yeah, exactly. down. And then finally, I think once a year, everyone should do an organic acid test. You know, because you know that tells you that's kind of like a good overview. And, you know, so you know you'll, you'll see how's you how's your Krebs cycle working? How's everything else going? So I, I think in that in my mind, neuroendocrine GI. And, and detox system test those systems you know once off the rip and then once a year i think a good organic acid test because that's kind of like a cleanup test with we can continue with your bioidenticals i think you're good to go and if you have specific problems you know there's peptides or different things out there that we can correct these with so let's talk about um intracellular nad levels right because you guys gave me and monica the patches you know monica loves them she wears them still we got so many of them that you sent us and as i told you i wore them for a week and i was like eh. and obviously i'm very optimized I'm, right. I'm, I'm super mitochondrial optimized. I'm using carbon 60. I hit myself with medical grade red light, you know, now daily. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that I do that the average person doesn't do. I told you Dr. Jin or whatever his name is, the Chinese guy is big with the uh, intercellular NAD testing. They sent me their test. Monica yeah. just got back yesterday. 
uh, from California. So hopefully I can trick myself tomorrow morning and I get oh, yeah, right. plus. Yeah. So I'm going to get tested. I'm going to get tested for it. You know, they sent me their test, but um, in that scope of thing, like, cause we got to talk about this. Yeah. The big issue right now, I just did two podcasts back to back with Susan Braxton, who's like the world famous sexologist. And then Dr. Elliot Justin, who's like literally the erection master or urologist who's, you know, retired. He's still multiple companies and he lives in the, uh, Montana now, but he's all big into like enhancing male erectile function, which by the way, Roy, as you know, is the worst of all time. And again, it's due to well, the climate needed environment, people being nervous, you know, taking smoking weed, you know, taking pills that fuck them up serotonergically, dope or no levels are terrible, Jay. I mean, I you- mean, all of it is a disaster. So so when do men and when should women literally start contemplating getting you know, the P and the O shot. I mean, I mean, again, uh, full disclosure, you know, cause you're helping me, but like my wife and I started last year and we will do one O and P shot a year for now on until I can't have sex anymore. I mean, I mean, until the end, I would assume because it, they're, they're that helpful, but when should men and women start really looking into this? Cause again, bro, like the average guy, I mean, Dr. Justin knows all the statistics and he tells me right now that the average man who's 45 and up cannot maintain a solid erection for literally more than two minutes and 22 seconds. It's 222. It's like a joke that they have. But so I mean, you think about this, and this is a man who's 40 and up, 40, 45. So it's like, why are people not getting O shots and P shots? And if you want to define what those are for the people that don't know, most of my audience does, but for those that don't, you can talk about it. Yeah. So, you know, th- the the reason they're beneficial, and I'll tell you, Jay, the other scary thing about that is that's like that that's like the canary in the tunnel, right? If someone has erectile dysfunction, that's a sign of endothelial dysfunction, right? If you have uh, which is blood vessel dysfunction, if you have blood vessel dysfunction that's affecting your, your your erectile dysfunction, there's a good chance it's having effects, systemic effects with other blood vessels in your body. Yeah, you're a heart attack waiting to happen with endothelial dysfunction. Yeah, so if you're listening to this and you have erectile dysfunction, you know that's obviously terrible, and you can fix it with with a P shot. And what what P shots and O shots are is either using uh, an umbilical cord extract, or you can use like a good double spin PRP. Although the umbilical cord extract is better, uh, and you inject it, you know, in the male situation, obviously into the penis, uh, which doesn't hurt. Or in the female, it's used for two different things. A lot of females, after having children, have urinary incontinence. And if you focus the injections around the urethra, it fixes that. That's a cure. So any female that has a urinary contact for kids, that's totally preventable and treatable with these injections. And obviously, if you do it around the clitoris, it makes them much more sensitive, which guys all like that. So, um, and, But basically, all it does is it creates more blood flow. It creates angiogenesis. It increases circulation either the, to, the, 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 to the penis, the clitoris, or the urethra, which is be- very beneficial. And, and, you know, full disclosure... Uh, I don't have erectile dysfunction. I mean, I, I definitely use, you know, whatever I can, you know, five milligrams of Cialis. If Monica and I are going away for a weekend and we're going to get, you know, frisky where we're going to do it twice a day, perhaps even more if that if possible, you know, I'll use 12 to 15 milligrams of Cialis. I'm very open about that. I'll use a cock ring. I mean, again, you know, as you get into your fifties and older, you got to do whatever, whatever adjuvant you can use. Right. But it's like, I'm blown away that more people don't look into the O and the P shot because relative to the cost, I think they think it's going to hurt Jay, but it doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> There's no pain. Dude, I mean, pain look, as a guy who's done this now twice and my wife has done it twice, I will sing its praises. It is absolutely amazing. It is relationship saving. I mean, let's be honest, dude, like women, I mean, I've been talking about men with erectile dysfunction, even in perfect health and great endothelial function, which I have. And I have my biological aid test to back this up. Again, the environment is so contaminated, Roy. It's, it's, you know, Dr. Justin was saying, he's like, look, it has nothing to do with guys that have belly fat or metabolic derangement. It literally is an environment that is so contaminated with endocrine disrupting chemicals, phthalates, plastics. I mean, even the EMF, you know, the EMF is zapping us, dude. So it's like we're under assault at all times. He's like, you got to use, I mean, he's obviously big into cock rings and stuff like that, but he's like, and he, and he loves PRP, he loves, you know, Gaines Wave and now even the Rocket or the Phoenix, whatever it's called. And so he's like, it's all means necessary for a man, but women are now also dealing with the same issues. Like women now have, as you just said, urinary incontinence, uh, dry, vaginal dryness. I mean, bro, 
it is so hard to remain virile as an aging man and woman now because of our contaminated environment. So, I mean, I am a huge proponent of both the O and the P shot. I mean, I see magic with both of them. And again, it only has to be done once a year. And, 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 and relative to the cost and the benefit, dude, it's actually worth every penny. Because all you're, just to keep it real simple for everyone listening, all you're doing is over time, the capillaries and blood vessels shrink. That's part of the aging process. Right. 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 When you get this P shot, no shot, you're just restoring the blood vessels to, to like when they were younger. That's all you're doing. There's no, you know, there's no danger to it whatsoever. You're just, you know, basically adding fertilizer there. The body's going to regrow new, you're going to get angiogenesis, new blood vessel formation. So you're, you're just restoring blood flow to either the clitoris or the vagina and the penis. That's all you're doing. Who wouldn't want that? I mean, dude, it's unreal. I mean, I will say, and you know this, and it's weird how we are biologically. Men notice the effects a little bit, again, in, in, in the big picture overall. I know there's outliers, but men notice the effects faster normally than women do. But dude, when it comes on and women... <laughs> If cool, they don't, oh, this is all preventable, dude. It's all 100 preventable, Jay. You know that. You know, with hormones and the P shot, O shot, and sexual, you can have you be in your sexual prime as long as you want to be in my opinion. That's just, you know, it's all about hormones and, and blood and circulation. That's it. That's all you need. And like you said, man, and we can just end it with this. Um, you cannot rely on this allopathic sick care system to get any of that. They're not going to talk about that. They don't give a shit about wellness. They don't care about you being sexually and physically, mentally, and spiritually optimized. I mean, cause you and I both know, bro, like you can't even get, I mean, you know, we're, we're talking physical, but the spiritual comes when you're physically optimized because when you're physically optimized, you're not in pain, you're not suffering, you're not lacking sleep. You can actually focus on your spirituality because you're not 100%. every three or four hours. And I think you you had mentioned Jay. When's a good time? I think if you if you feel like you need to start taking Viagra or Cialis, that's when you have to start thinking about doing your P shot because that's the first sign. The you know the blood the circulation is definitely decreasing, and that doesn't mean Viagra and Cialis aren't aren't good things. They're, they're, those are fine, but you can fix the cause by getting those P shots. And I would say, and and obviously, I want you to support me. And maybe I'm wrong, but I would say for me, like once a year. I mean, is there an age where you, or is it 18 months? I mean, is there an age where you say, nah, you could probably just do it every other year? I mean, for me, I mean, I did it last year and it was absolutely insanely amazing for like six to seven months. And obviously I just did it with you guys two months ago and I'm like in the middle of like, yeah. So it's like, is it once a year? I mean, what do you think? And it, does it depend on everyone's going to be different? I think once a year is probably a good rule. It, I, I think that sounds, that's logical to me. But you'll yeah. kind of know because it'll kind of taper off again. The circulation <laughs> for city three, you know, it just is what it is, right? You know, what? And where are you living? I mean, you're back in the states. It might be a little worse than Mexico. <laughs> it's gonna be worse than here for sure. It's so true, dude. Like it's funny you say that because in Mexico, you can look up in the sky every night and see the stars and be blown away. And living in the United States, you can't see shit. And the food's so good there. I mean, like the vegetables and the fruit, everything. Like, that's, that's another podcast. We'll go on that one later. Yeah. Dude, you and I were talking about that the other day. It's like, how do you even know that the wild caught fish and the grass fed beef that you get in the United States isn't contaminated? I mean, I've told you this before. The last time we were talking on the phone, when Monica makes hamburgers, you know, grass fed beef burgers, she, she grills them. It's like a flip of the coin that I'm going to eat them. Because if I taste the chemicals, because again, being in Mexico for 10 months, you know what's contaminated, what is it? Because there's nothing contaminated down there. You come here and you eat it and you taste the chemical. 100%. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, it depends on the environment. So, but, you know, arthritis, red cow, all these things, you don't have to suffer with, you know, most of the hallmarks aging, you don't have to have those. Yeah. You know? 100%. We, we just dabble with the NAD. We talked about that for a minute, too. You know, NAD and glutathione are what make the Krebs cycle work. And they, they just to keep it simple, the Krebs cycle is how your body takes fats, carbohydrates, and protein and per- turns it into energy. Yeah. So, and, and basically, it, it, that's the motor that turns that whole process. You know, unfortunately, as we age, every every five years from the time you're born, your NAD levels decrease uh, 20% every five years. Yeah. So that's one of the hallmarks of aging. Once again, you can restore those NAD levels and glutathione levels with by either injecting them, taking them with iontophoresis, there's multiple ways to do it, and it makes you feel younger again. It just is what it is. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to have you come back on after we get the results of our tests, and we can talk about NAD plus and like whether or not I need to supplement. And then you also need to send me the test for stomach, 
to see how uh, it how it can hey, I'm only gonna say that if you if you if you share it online. A hundred percent I'll do it. Yeah. I mean if I if I'm contaminated, you know that I'm gonna admit it. I have no problem. Maybe I mean, my whole life is adapt and pivot. If I'm making mistakes, I change, I fix. I, you know, uh, accentuate, turn around and just steer the ship in a different direction, but I'll definitely have you come on. Okay. So for guys and gals, this is his third appearance on the Jay Campbell podcast. You only get a third appearance if you know your shit. So obviously support the amazing folks at his clinic, which is Buckeye anti-aging or Buckeye PMR.com. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.